Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to PowerTest. Welcome to Power Tip 13. The title of this Power Tip is Don't Get Burned by Inductor Core Loss. The point of this topic is that as we go higher and higher in operating frequencies and power supplies, we're going to run up against core loss issues in our power inductors. Here are a number of equations that kind of tell you the characteristics of an inductor. As in all magnetics, the size of the inductor is set by the temperature rise normally and then maybe by the saturation rating of the core material. So we can calculate the temperature rise in the inductor as some constant times the sum of the copper loss and the core loss. And the core loss is set by the flux density in the inductor and the operating frequency. Again, the core loss is equal to some constant times the change in flux density raised to a B power times the frequency raised to an A power. Or since the ripple current is related to the flux density, we can simply put that power in a core is equal to a new constant times the change in current raised to a B power times the frequency raised to an A power. So usually ripple current is set as a percentage of the DC output current. So the change in current in our inductor is equal to some percentage of the output current or we can rearrange this expression, it's uh, another constant divided by the frequency times the inductance. So the point to this slide is that the total loss between the core loss and the copper loss in the inductor has to be a constant. That's set by the maximum operating temperature of the inductor. So as we start at a low frequency, like this 100 kilohertz on the left, we're going to find that the power in the core is a small percentage of the total power. In this case, it's probably less than 5% of the total power. And as we go up in frequency, according to those last expressions we looked at, we're going to find that the core loss comes up. And that's going to reduce the allowable copper loss in our inductor. And we're going to keep increasing the core loss and decreasing the copper loss until we reach a point. And that's the optimum point for this inductor. This is the point where you're going to get the maximum power out of the inductor. As we go to higher and higher frequencies, we have to reduce our peak current to maintain an equal core loss. Again, this is showing the inductance th that we need in our inductor as a function of frequency and then also shows the core loss as we go up in frequency. So the inductance falls linearly with frequency up to a point. And that point is when the core loss and the copper loss are equal. And uh, once we go above that point, we have to increase the inductance in the inductor to control the flux density and hence the core loss and that limits the amount of power that we get out of the inductor. So the main point here is that 100 kilohertz normally we don't have to worry about core loss in the inductor it's usually a small percentage of the total loss in the inductor. As we start pushing up to higher and higher operating frequencies with our inductors the core loss is going to be significant and you should check the core loss from the manufacturer's data sheets to make sure that you're not over dissipating your inductor. For more power tips, visit Power Management Design Line and search for power tips, or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks for your attention.